Frey, are you ready? I'll ever be. Okay, as ready as you'll ever be. All right. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we need everyone to get in the center aisle right here in between the right up. Everyone up and sit in the center aisle. Sit. Yeah, we're yep. just sitting in the center aisle. We're being serious. <laughs> Get up in there, yeah. Sitting in the center aisle. Everyone. Sitting or standing? Uh, sitting, sitting, yes. Oh, oh, oh. That's already. Probably that's for the inconvenience. And oh, I'm actually going to need you guys to get way, like, oh, everybody's going to need you guys way closer together. Yeah, like, seriously, like, space is a big issue. Yeah, so, uh, why, why don't I, like, close your eyes for a second and you know, what, what I'm going to pose to you is, is a real life scenario, except instead of being here for just a couple seconds, this would be six months of your life, literally um, in darkness for most of it, in terrible conditions, and actually in much more cramped positions than this, believe it or not. Um, and uh, this would be your life uh, with disease running rampant. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the subject we're talking about today. You guys can open your eyes. Uh, now and um, sorry, the reason we had had this illustration is because it's a, today when we're talking about um, the triangular trade, we want you guys to understand that, that this is um, these are people. These are um, you know just like you and I. They're not numbers. They're not products. Uh, so when we like give numbers, I really want you to kind of see yourself in, in those shoes, so we can realize just how uh, how big of an issue some of the things presented in our uh, lesson today. And so everyone can get up and, and we'll go on with, with uh, the lesson. So thank you guys. Yeah, so we're actually talking about the entire triangular trade today. Um, and the reason why uh, people were put in those positions were for economic purposes. So first we're going to talk about the goods um, that were at stake. So from Europe to Africa, in Europe, uh, you guys might know, it was much more industrialized. Even though we're talking about colonial era, it's still, um, they had uh, very good mineral wealth and they were able to produce copper, uh, which Africa did not have the luxury of at the time, um, as well as uh, guns. Um, Europeans were uh, some of the first people to use guns and, uh, and you know, obviously it was an overwhelming force at the time, so it became a very, uh, uh, very prosperous uh, trade good, as well as glass um, could be used for containers. It's very pretty. Um, you know, we use glass today. It's very practical, uh, so you can imagine it would, how much it would be used. And then rum, uh, people love rum. In fact, uh, at the time in Europe, rum could actually be used as a form of currency. So it was thought that the average, uh, the average man, woman, and child cons uh, consumed an average of about two, three gallons a year. So rum's a huge thing and uh, Africa wanted it and Europe, uh, Europe had it, as well as textiles. Um, so oftentimes we'll see uh, the colonists would have, uh, would bring raw products to Europe. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And uh, the Europeans would um, create a more manufactured product, in this case, textiles, um, which would then be shipped to Africa and often woven into intricate designs. <coughs> So the second part of the trade that we're going to talk about is um, the part from, so we just talked about Europe to Africa. Now we're going to talk about North America to Europe. And uh, first we have molasses. That was used in the making of rum uh, and it was, uh, was a huge product in the Caribbean. Rum again. So actually, rum originated. It's um, it originated in the Caribbean. Then there was a lot of uh, stills and, and producers in um, in the colonies. And it was rum was actually very practical too for the colonists because it was um, it was actually easier to uh, to distill um, rum than it was to purify water in many instances. So it became a, a cheaper and easier uh, form of uh, drinking substance. Um, sugar. I mean, who doesn't love sugar? It started out as a luxury good, um, as you know, it's only something that the upper class would have the, the pleasure of getting, but um, by the end of the 16th century, it'd be widely accessed for jams, desserts. Um, we kind of see a little bit of the sweet tea come about. It's not like us Southerners like today, but uh, a little bit. 
in uh, that era, as well as tobacco. Um, so our, my boy John Rolfe started uh, the tobacco uh, cash crop industry. He was the first person, he's a Virginian. Uh, tobacco is a huge product right here in the Lynchburg area and all throughout Virginia. Um, and it became uh, widespread in Europe. Everyone loved tobacco. And uh, John Rolfe, who you guys might know, um, Mary Pocahontas, he's the guy who started all that. And uh, cotton. So, you know, we talked about uh, textiles. Um, cotton would, would be the raw product of that. And um, uh, it actually brings us to the topic that Abby's going to get into today a little bit. Um, because cotton was, uh, at first it was produced by like small farms and stuff but they just realized there was much more money to be made. So what ends up happening next is we see huge plantations in which, we, uh, that in which uh, plantation owners needed a lot more workers. And uh, that brings us, unfortunately, to the slave trade. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna talk about the slave trade, which obviously happened between Africa and the America, North America. Um, the formal name for the slave trade is um, the Middle Passage, which was the slave trade obviously between Africa and Americas. Um, how were these people taken through, usually kidnapped by people in tribes and then bring them into the trading area, or they were just purchased by other masters? Um, the ship conditions we're gonna talk about here a little bit is just absolutely atrocious. It was really just a really horrible time in African American history. Some people have even gone as far as to say that it was African Holocaust because of the massive amount of people that died during this time. Um, they were on the ship for about six months, which you just need to take into account, like you guys, when you were cramped in the middle, just need to remember how long they had to overcome the situations that they were in. Um, they were tightly packed, as, you, uh, as um, Troy said. Um, women were given about five feet, six inches, and men about six feet per person, so obviously when taking into consideration the diversity of like people and height differences, it just became much more cramped than it should like it should have been. As you can see up in the picture, people were just stacked like cargo. It was a really dehumanizing kind of process, which caused many of the African Americans to uprise to try to go against the captains and take over the ship, which never really was successful because of the fact that um, the captains had weapons and just really horrible ways of treating them. They didn't see them as human beings, so they would whip them, they would just be absolutely terrible to them. So uprisings were never really successful. The conditions um, between the decks were absolutely horrible. Um, they were unclean because they didn't have bathrooms or anything. They were stuck under there all day. Um, so there was like urine everywhere, blood everywhere, sweat. It just smelled absolutely horrible. So not only did they have to sit down there all day in the darkness, but they had to smell all of these and listen to people crying and weeping and just like the horrible um, emotional problems that that caused as well. Not only because of the, um, just the physical conditions, but just the area around them was horrible. Um, obviously, with the unclean conditions, the disease spread was extremely quickly. Um, as the next slide says, um, the conditions obviously caused the spread of many of the diseases, but um, some of the main diseases that um, ran rampant were um, dysentery and scurvy. So those really caused a lot of people to die. and. Um, People can't say an exact estimate of how many people died on the way to America, but they say only about roughly half the people that got on the ship made it to America. Um, the roughest estimate they have right now is about 2 million people, so that's obviously a huge amount of people, which obviously could cause it uh, why people can call it the African Holocaust because so many people died off of this. Um, and it spread quickly, obviously. The sign of illness, if the captain saw um, an African-American that was looking like they were getting sick or getting one of these diseases, they would throw them overboard <laughs> alive. So not only did they have to deal with disease, they tried to conceal it as much as possible because of the problems that occurred there. Um, what are, upon arriving to the Americas, they were given more food and just like treated a little bit better because of the fact that they wanted to sell them and make them to look the best they could. So um, a few days before they would arrive, they usually got about two meals a day, but upon arriving to the Americas, they were given a little bit more food just so that they looked a little bit, had more um, girth on them. Also to help them keep their muscles well, they made them dance, but they had chains around their um, 
ankles. The men only had to dance. Women and children didn't have to, but they played music. And yeah, you would think it's, oh, a good fun time, but they made them do it for so long that it would make their ankles go raw from rubbing on machines all day, which obviously made it so much worse to spreading diseases and people dying. It was, conditions were horrible. Um, when transporting to land, they didn't bring the ship directly to the docks. They had it a little bit further out. So they would take rowboats and bring it to the ship and then transport people back to land because of the fact that they didn't really want to advertise the disease and horrible conditions that were on the ship because it just smelled so bad that they had to keep it far offshore so it didn't infect the land. Oh, sorry. Okay, so now we're going to go into a smart board activity. Um, I need someone to come up here and um, drag one of these to the proper place it was supposed to be traded. Raise your hand. <laughs> to the Americas is going to be um, the, the slaves, unfortunately. It's, unfortunately, um, Africa really was just laborers. So, um, so yeah, textiles is actually going to be from Europe to Africa. But thanks for coming up here. Yeah. Now's the time to learn. So. Any other questions? Um, before, um, we have one. to a page where you enter a PIN number, and this will be the number you enter, 172893. <laughs> <coughs> Our 
Are we okay to go over for the quiz? For the yeah, assessment? do the quiz. Okay. Yeah, do the okay. quiz. Sure. Everyone in? We get to know these people less, so if you want to rip us to shreds, <laughs> do what you gotta do. Be honest, it's for posterity. Yes, that's right. Great. 